All right, good morning. So this is part three. Uh, this is our, our third and final part of our webinar series for uh, our solar uh, education uh, segment. And this is where we're going to be covering the administration part of it, as we, as we kind of call it. So this is more the the office work and, and uh, before the install and after the install uh, part of it. So uh, today, take some notes. Please feel free to uh, to take notes. And then if you have any questions, if you see the screen there in the middle uh, of the slide here, you'll see a, a copy of the GoToWebinar module that you'll find usually on the right-hand side of your screen. And then you can ask questions uh, there, and we'll get to those as quickly as we can. We may ask those in the middle of the webinar, or we may handle those at the end. And then also you have a chat as well that you can communicate with each other if you'd like. Additionally, in there you'll also see five handouts that we'll be referencing throughout the webinar as well. So please uh, ask as many questions as, you, as you'd like and uh, that'll give us something to, to cover at the end and we'll go ahead and get started. Our agenda. So we're going to talk about meeting expectations, uh, utility interactions, state regulations, then state and fund, uh, federal incentives, and then we actually uh, on our one of our bullet points here for SREX uh, being a company called SREXTrade.com. They are an aggregate, and uh, Cameron was going to join us today, but he is actually going to be absent as he's out sick. And uh, he said he'd be coughing more than he's actually speaking. So he decided to, to bow out for today. So we'll be covering his slides. And we'll talk about some, about some project spotlights and then questions and answers uh, at the end. So today, uh, we'll all be presenting. So we have Jeremy Vondahar, myself, Kyle Smith, and Carly Fletcher. So I'll take the first section here myself, meeting expectations. What that means is making sure that the consumer is fully prepared for what the array will look like on the ground or on the building and what the craftsmanship of it will look like, along with inverter location. In our previous webinars, we also talked about uh, microinverters versus string inverters and what that would look like underneath their array or on the side of the house um, as being another option by their meter or wherever that may be located. So just informing them of what that inverter would look like and maybe even showing them some other some other jobs uh, that you've done in the past or that we can send you some images of to show them what exactly that may look like. So you're just kind of in front of their questions before they ask them and um, just to make your installation go a little bit smoother. The, uh, back to the array though, um, just making sure that you have uh, communicated well to the consumer what it will look like on the roof, uh, what type of feet you plan to use, um, because the roof is always a sensitive subject. So making sure that you have a good plan um, with them and what that would look like. And then also a wiring plan so that uh, no matter what type of inverter you use or how you plan to wire it, um, that you have that ready to go. And then energy production range, we've put range in there for a reason, just, just because typically you always want to err to the, uh, to the lower side of production so, so that the consumer knows that, that you'll be producing this limited amount or not limited this this amount of electricity bringing back into your into their system but they'll be happily pleased whenever it's just a little bit over what you said it was going to be as a part of that lastly would be the savings where you're going to factor in uh, factor in all the moving components basically being the federal tax credit any local and state or local incentives uh, utility incentives uh, and utility programs, and then knowing their uh, their kilowatt rate and what the, how that impact their their savings on how quickly their payback will be. Uh, we actually can take if you communicate to us after we do a design 
if you communicate back to us where you'll where you plan to be at uh, from a retail price, we can actually put a, a very nice proposal tool together um, uh, through our program that uh, we'll be covering here after a while, and uh, put that together for you so you can present that back to the homeowner on uh, the savings expectations. All right, so the next part is utility interactions. So the first step is always have a very good relationship with your utility, which most everybody does if you're installing heating and cooling equipment um, or solar, but always go to the utility first. Just have a, a good ball game with them on as far as have a good plan uh, with them, find out the rules and what their expectations are for an installation. And then insurance coverage, that would be uh, depending on that utility again, um, or your homeowner's insurance on just what is expected. Uh, some utilities require more insurance, um, and then also some uh, homeowners insurance companies want to know if you are adding that solar array onto the roof as well. And then pre-approval would be back to that utility that I was referencing, uh, getting their approval and stamp of approval before starting the job, just making sure that uh, your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed. Commissioning is a big part of that utility interaction. Um, they usually want to be the ones to turn on the system. So they want to come after you've done the install and basically they want to be the ones to throw the knife, disconnect to turn it on. Typically what you'll see is they want their, their labeling to be properly done on the system and then they'll add their own labels on once they arrive more than likely. And then after they've uh, approved the the installation, they'll turn it on for the consumer uh, and yourself. So it's always a good idea if you can though, to be with them when they do commission the system. Many utilities also require a one line diagram, not always necessary, but uh, it's still a good um, good thing to have, especially for your, wi your wiring plan. And that's what you see on this diagram here to the right. Uh, you'll see your, your modules on the left hand side of the screen going into a junction box in this case then to a DC disconnect, which depending on what type of inverters you use, it could be integrated or it could not be needed, uh, depending on the setup. And then your 10KW, in this case, inverter going back into the breaker of the house. Uh, so from there, then any financial incentives that that utility may have, uh, they may have more than net metering available. Um, and but if they have net metering available that's kilowatt for kilowatt that's pretty darn good uh, some bigger utilities depending on state will have uh, for example Ameren's one here in illinois that i'm personally on and their net metering policy is a kilowatt for kilowatt and fiscal year of april 1st to april 1st basically allowing uh, production through out the summer and uh, allowing you to carry that production, banking it till the winter. So in regards to net metering, we're, we're really just using the grid as a battery. Uh, if, there's an, if there's one common misconception that we hear, it's that, well, I've got to have a battery, right? So people don't think I can just get a, you can just get a solar array. They think that you need a battery. Well, explain to them, that the grid is the battery. So you're essentially either using your power right off, right from the solar array initially, and you're self consuming, and or you're doing so in building up, you're banking up credits essentially back to the grid. So how in that net metering process, find out what, what the program is. Does the utility offer a kilowatt for kilowatt? or what, what are you paying for your kilowatt usage? And then buyback, typically uh, you'll see that uh, utility um, will either do kilowatt for kilowatt or they'll be at say, um, for example, another, another 
co-op locally here to us does, I know they do 11 cents um, as the buy rate and the buy back rate is at wholesale of 4.5 cents, um, which leads me to the next point, which is they, some people call that a net metering program, but that's really what we kind of call a quote fake net metering. And it's not really net metering at all. It's just a, it's a nice name for them to say that they are doing uh, a, a program where they're buying it back rather. So then, uh, and then the time frame net metering programs often have a uh, start and an end date. Uh, you'll find that your good utilities for net metering aren't going to be uh, at the beginning of the year for their fiscal year, that they go back to that April date uh, as well or, or some other date around there. But April's a, a good month to start the, start the solar production year in. All right, so I'm going to pass it to Carly now, and she's going to cover state regulations. So we have some links right here that are also part of the handout. Um, it covers the Interstate Renewable Energy Council, um, just talking about the different license, licensing and cert certifications that you'll need, um, as well as ICC license. This is definitely something you'll want to look into whenever you go to install a system. So um, this all needs to be done preferably before you start installing, but um, go ahead and take a look at it. And we'll cover more about this at the live training too. Um, and then if you have any other questions, please feel free to call us with it. Okay, and then the state and federal incentives. So um, as many of you know, there's a 30% tax, cre tax credit incentive from the federal. Um, and then there's also different state incentives that Jeremy will cover later. Um, this is also part of the handout too. It will have all the links that you'll need to do some research on it or to present to customers, as well as um, the link from Desire and Solar Power Authority. It just shows um, what kind of incentives there are state by state. So other than the federal and the state ones, there are some like local ones that you can look into. So there's always money coming from somewhere. So. Nice thing about solar is is that uh, it's 30% for residential and 30% for commercial as well. So that's quite a bit better than what we see for geothermal itself. And then also, if the customer is needing a roof replacement, that roof that is that you're putting the solar on will also be applicable for the 30% tax incentive. And just to touch on, I, you see up there the uh, state tax credit um, example, Iowa. So I know just for an example of what some states offer, I know I believe Iowa um, covers up to 50% of the total um, cost of the system, up to $5,000. So it's really a state-by-state -state, um, issue that you just want to be sure to make sure and look through and see what your state does offer on the solar side of things. Okay, so now we get to solar renewable energy credits. Um, so good morning, everyone. My name is Jeremy Vonderhaar. You may have heard me speak before on the previous webinar, but I am part of the um, inside sales team here, and also part of the solar team handling the design and sizing out of systems. Um, so right now we're gonna go through what SRX are, um, what they are, how do they work, and what uh, just some general information and overview on them uh, to give you guys a good idea. So an overview on SREX. Um, so they came about because many states, or um, such as Illinois, um, have energy goals in place. And because of this, they have what's called a renewable portfolio standard. So I believe for Illinois, um, it's, they're wanting to be 25% renewable by 2025, um, the last time I checked. Um, so due to this, they require some of the different electric suppliers in Illinois to get a certain percentage of their energy from solar energy. Um, so that's why these electric um, utilities or suppliers are buying these SREX from system owners. So an SREX itself um, is a credit that a system owner will receive for every one megawatt hour of energy produced by their system. Um, and one megawatt hour, of course, being 1,000 kilowatt hours. Um, these programs do vary state by state. Um, so be sure to check if your state does have a 
some type of program like this. Um, today we're going to be covering Illinois as our example because um, that's one of the ones we receive the most questions and interest in right now. Um, so on average, um, just for a little bit of background information to give you an idea, um, a 10KW AC system will generally produce around 12 SREX per year. And this SREX program itself is based on the expected production of that solar system over a 15-year period. So they're going to be looking at, okay, how many SREX will this um, system produce annually? And then they're going to do that for 15 years period of time. Um, so the size of the system will determine which pricing category it falls under, which I'll get into here in a little bit, as well as the uh, funds allocated um, to the block. Once they run out, then the pricing will fall on to the next block, which we will touch on right here. So up here you can see on this chart, um, we've got Group A and Group B, and this is for Illinois. Um, so Group A, you have a certain set of utilities, and uh, same with Group B. So let's go ahead and look at Group A. So Group A, um, you can see under block category, let's say if you have a system that's equal to a 10KW system and below it, um, you'll receive $85.10 per SREC produced by your system. And of course, that's going to be over the 15-year period of time. But then you can see on block two um, that the price does drop down a little bit. Um, so from my understanding, once the pricing or funding for block one um, is gone through, then it will drop to block two. Um, so then you see um, 10 to 10, 10 to 25 kW. It drops down to $78.70, uh, 25 to 100 kW, $64.41. So as you can see, as your system size increases, the price you receive for each SREC you produce goes down, but you are producing more of them. So facility requirements. Um, just some general information on here, which I won't spend too much time on. Um, and as Carly or Kyle mentioned, there is um, one of these handouts available to you is um, the original slides from Cameron, um, our guest speaker, which go much more in depth if you want a much better idea um, on what the ESREC program is. Um, but just to uh, give you a few ideas on facility requirements. Um, so you see up there, photovoltaic distributed um, renewable energy generation services, also referred to as DG Solar. This is typically what you're gonna be seeing if you see um, solar array up on a residential house or out in front of a uh, commercial building. Um, that's gonna fall under the DG Solar. Um, by default, facilities must be Illinois sided, of course, for the Illinois SREC program, and they must be greater than um, 2,000 kW AC system size. A um, little bit on net metering requirements, or just metering requirements in general. Um, facilities must be larger um, than 10 kW, um, and they will receive a revenue grade meter. If they are under that 10 kW AC system size mark, then they do not require a revenue grade meter. Um, reporting uh, production uh, via estimates is not allowed. And on the development timeline um, side of things, um, it's not required. DG Solar applications have 12 months after being energized. Um, for approval. Um, extensions may be granted on um, based on mechanical completion and or legal delays and six months extension uh, for $25 per kilowatt AC deposit as well. So basically you can get pre-approval to get your RECs or a consumer uh, for a consumer to get their RECs and then they have 12 months to get that up on the roof so uh, or, or on the ground um, so to get their array functional and uh, that should that should at least help out with uh, quite a few uh, jobs to get them secured and in the books so that you can uh, work on those in the times that are good for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, contract payment terms, uh, approved facilities are paid on the following schedule. So like I mentioned before, if you're at that 10 kW system size and below, you'll be paid in front. Um, for the contract for the 15 year period of time, if you're anything above that 10 kW um, AC system size, then it's gonna be a five year um, payment term. Um, IPA and SREC trade fees. The IPA fees, uh, facilities pay one time non-refundable application fee of $10 per kilowatt AC, not exceeding $5,000. Um, and on SREC trade side of things, SREC trade, um, the standard management and transaction fees will be assessed upon payment of contract funds to the facility owner. 
and the fee structure will be dependent on facility size and rates uh, will be finalized after the IPA issues their final plan, which should be here um, in the near future. Okay, so up here you can see some um, resources uh, to find out more information on the AIP, um, IPA and SREC trade fees. And you see down here um, under IPA and SREC trade fees, you see facility owners and developers and sellers. So if you have any other questions today um, that come up um, later on, just feel free to reach out to SREC trade um, at installers at SRECTrade.com. If you're planning on installing solar and you can reach them at um, those phone numbers as well. I will cover actually uh, real quick on can you, if you can go back to slide. Uh, we we chose to work with SRC Trade because they uh, they match our business model a lot and they are very easy to work with. Um, they answer our questions quickly. They're real people and uh, they'll take you all the way through the process. So if you ever if you have SREX to work with, they are a great resource. And so there's multiple states that have those. There is what Illinois, Massachusetts, uh, I think Ohio still has some available. But even if your state doesn't have any now, uh, more than likely it will be coming in the future uh, to you. So uh, Illinois and uh, Massachusetts and Ohio, it used to be Pennsylvania actually too, but they are they're working to become more renewable on their energy production so you can expect those states to uh, have programs in I would say the short future. Okay I'm going to go ahead and pass it back over to Carly here and she's going to cover our project spotlights on the solar side of things. So for every install that you guys do we ask that you please fill out a project spotlight form. Uh, this form is also a handout that um, can be sent to me anytime. What we're doing with this is we're actually putting this on our website for other installers or other customers and consumers to look at it and see the final product and see the real houses and the real people installing it. And then what we're planning on doing for our solar site is instead of a dealer locator, we're going to do a project locator. So throughout the United States, there'll be little dots and pinpoints on where you've installed solar and they'll get to see like, oh, someone installed right next to me, stuff like that. So this is a really great um, tool that you can use, especially for marketing. And this is also something that you can put on your own website to promote it. Um, we'll be going over this more in the training August 8th, so make sure to sign up with that. But um, anytime you, you get it installed, just please try to get some pictures of it, try to write down um, everything, all the details and information for it because the more information, the better. And like we said last week, we'd love to come help you with it, uh, even deliver the product at the same time. And uh, we can bring some uh, camera gear as well and uh, make a day of it, so. Um, this picture up here on the website is actually one that we just did it, with the Scrantons and Mount Sterling. So this is what the actual layout will look like. This is what um, all the pictures on there are the ones that we took. So this, is, like I said, this is a great tool. And big thank you to Casey and John who are on here too. All right, so that puts us at our questions and answer side of it. Uh, and we really actually stayed on time today. Um, does anybody have any, any questions that, uh, that they would like to type into the question box on on your go to webinar uh, side of the screen there. We'll just give it a second here and see if we get any. Yeah, I would highly suggest downloading the SREC handout that we have. There's a lot of information in there that is really important. There's just so much of it that's hard to cover in a 30 minute time frame. So really take a look at that. That will answer a lot of your questions that you'll have with it. Right. And it is a lot of information um, to go over. So if you have any questions that come up for you after looking through something like that, feel free to reach out to us anytime and uh, we'll try to answer any questions you have or get in touch with us directly to answer them as well. On the structure, uh, 
the wrecks, at least for Illinois, they did, actually came from the, uh, it actually came from the Illinois Solar Association, which is actually ISEA, Illinois Solar Energy Association. And they were behind the, the structure of the wrecks and working with the IPA. Um, so uh, it, it could depend on state by state on how those are, are built in the, in the future. Um, we'll also be putting this video on our YouTube page, which will be, um, there'll be a link to it in the thank you that we send out after this. So look out for that, as well as the other two webinars. So you'll have access to those anytime you need them. Yep, so after today, we'll send out a link um, with the recording. Yeah, and with the sign up for the training. And then also in the handouts, there is the flyer for the training to where you can sign up directly on there. Um, there's a link to it, so. All right, well, that, that'll conclude it. So we hope to see everybody uh, on the 8th at 8 a.m. in Greenville. Please let us know if you're able to attend. And there's no cost for that. And we'll uh, conclude with that. And thank you very much for attending. Thank you.